Hello everyone, welcome to Average Joe Watch Reviews. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing of the G-Shock. So without any further ado, let's jump on into it. So, first and foremost, <clears throat> it comes with just a regular flimsy cardboard box, nothing special. And then we just simply open it. And it comes in a tin case. They haven't changed that in years because um, I actually have an older G-Shock and it still comes in the same exact case. So before I open it, let's take a look. This is the instruction book that comes with it. You'd swear you were buying yourself a mini car, um, but this is just basically in every single language. So there's your warranty card. It's got some carbon fiber, graphic there pretty cool and it also kind of gives you a international warranty booklet and it goes into just some of the things that are covered now this one in particular has a msrp of 120 but i'm going to post below where you guys can get this watch all right, so let's open up and see what we have. Um, it actually has that on top. And here we are, guys. The Casio G-Shock. And this one is both digital and analog. So that's pretty, pretty neat look. So we can look at these side by side. And as you can see, I have two whitish versions okay so we have here a lot of things going on here let's point out some of the different aspects of this watch first and foremost at the six o'clock position is where we have our luminescence or should i say our light because this also does have lumen you, you can see here uh in between the five and four position actually closer to the five o'clock position you have the light and that actually lights up what you need to see digitally digitally right and we also have luminescence here and here and it's actually pretty decent um i'll actually run a picture across the screen to show you and it's got a really deep dish design i mean look at these hour markers look at these guys they really, I mean, they're really, really pronounced. It's a really cool look. Very beefy, chunky, aggressive kind of look. And you can see they, they really rest in there deeply into that dial. Lots of things going on here, guys. So as you can see right now, I have it set to the day. And I have the seconds. So check this out. We can go through different modes and look at the 9 o'clock position right here as I do that. Check that out, guys. Ain't that cool? I found that pretty fascinating. You can't, I can't do this, um, I can't do the light and at the same time, but you go into your different modes and it actually turns the wheel. And your pointer is actually gonna be your nine o'clock marker, which is actually acts as, it looks like a pointer. So right now it's on stopwatch. And as you can see, you just, you see that? Just like a standard stopwatch. Stop, reset, go to the next function. This one looks like it's a timer and it's gonna do a countdown. Nine minutes and your seconds. Stop, reset. Your next function is alarm function back to your time and it even tells you right there what that is this also tells you over here look at that so we're on world time so we can actually world time and what we can do is go through the different ones that so we have mow which is moscow 
CIA, which is Cairo, CAI, Cairo, Athens. Once it tells you the exact portion of the world it's in, it then gives you the time. So now you have dual time. So now it's 3.35, but 9.33 in Stockholm. We go over, we have Berlin. We have Rome. So that's really cool, guys. I, 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 really, I really like that aspect. And then we go back to stopwatch, countdown, alarm function, and time. So let's get into more of the construction of this. This is more of a rubberized type bezel. And as you can see, it's got some really cool detail with the hex screws here. It's got that Allen wrench look to it, um, where you would need an Allen wrench to get these off. I wouldn't recommend doing that, but it's got a really cool, robust look. The pushers have a really nice knurled look to it. Um, I really like these pushers. They're actually oversized so that they're very comfortable in the fingers and they provide a lot of grip. You've got the black surround in plastic. You also have a black surround on the outer bezel. You go on the other side and you've got the same knurled pushers. And also you have the white knurling for your light function, which then matches into the integrated knurling um well it's actually more of a diamond pattern but it actually matches very well and it actually really kind of seamlessly goes into that portion there so it actually looks like it belongs and it was created that way i like the tapering of the rubber strap as you can see it actually comes up in the middle so it has a little bit of a thicker edge to it okay a little bit ro more robustness going around the wrist. Very comfortable, by the way. This is plastic, but white plastic. And this is white plastic as well. White plastic keeper. And you do get one keeper. That's all you need. But as I said, this bracelet is, or should I say this, this silicone strap, it's actually more of a rubber strap, actually. Um but it really is comfortable. Now we take a look at the back of the case and we see Casio. And we read the water resistance to 20 bar. This is a carbon core guard, Japan movement, cased in Thailand. This is a watch that can take a beating. These watches are have a really good reputation in the watch community. And these are really good watches to take with you if you're really going to do something active and something where you're going to bang it around a lot because these things can take abuse. This is actually just a, a um, just a fun fact. These are the only watches that I actually will go swimming with. Um, these are only watches that I really trust with water resistance, and I'll do a video on that on that in the future. Uh, because there's just some type of debate in regards to water resistance or what that truly means. So we'll get into that at a, at a, at a later date. But yeah, these watches are excellent. Um, they take a beating, they last for years, and the price tag is just right. So I'll actually, as I said, post a link below to show you exactly where you can purchase one of these at a really awesome price. But yeah, uh, let's get into, um, let's just, just get into some, some dimensions and some measurements. So we'll take out our trusty calipers here. And we will indeed see what we have going on here. So first and foremost, our watch is measuring in case diameter is without the pusher. So our case diameter is a 45, okay? So it's actually the same size as a Mako. So I think if you look at them side by side, you can see that they are very similar in dimension. 
Um, so let's take a look at the width. The Mako was a 13 millimeter width size. This one comes in at 13. So very similar dimensions. Um, I actually didn't realize that. Um, let's take a look at the strap. And you know what? I actually forgot that this actually has the easy deployment system. Um, basically, you just got to get your nail in there and you're able to get the strap out. Um, I can't get my nail in there quite. It's actually not as easy as some systems, but definitely easier than a traditional um, pin system, as you can see there. So we could take a look at what is the dimension of the lug to lug. And as you can see there, we're looking at right out of 24. Okay, let's weigh the G-Shock. It would help to turn it on first. So we'll start off in ounces. I'm sorry, we'll start off in grams. And it is 64 grams. And we'll just flip it over to ounces. And that is actually, well, let's just make sure that's correct. Let me zero it out. Put it back on and it is 2.2 ounces. So it's extremely, extremely lightweight watch. Um, and that's due to the carbon core guard and just the fact that it's just made of light materials, but very durable and tough materials. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please take care of one another. And also please be kind to one another. Thank you again for watching. Please have a good one and I'll see you guys next time.